Welcome to the show, everyone. It's the Crypto Lark coming to you from New Zealand, bringing you this April 18th edition of what is happening in crypto. Bitcoin sliding just down below $8,000, down 0.85% on the day. Ethereum staying strong above 500. Stellar up 9.26%. Monero up 12.6%. NEM up 8%. And 0x up 11.8%. Of course, the big story of the day verge down 27 percent in the last 24 hours on news of the partnership deal that has been signed but we'll be talking about that a little bit more later on in the video christine lagarde the imf chief has come out saying positive things about cryptocurrencies which is very refreshing from someone in her position she says crypto assets enable fast and inexpensive financial transactions while offering some of the convenience of cash some payment services now make overseas transfers in a matter of hours, not days. The underlying technology of crypto assets, distributed ledger technology, or DLT, could help financial markets function more efficiently. Self-executing and self-enforcing smart contracts could eliminate the need for some intermediaries. This is really great. This is some really high-level acknowledgement that actually crypto assets can be a major tool in a positive way. So I'm really enthused about hearing her come out and say these things now over in new york new york launches a fact finding inquiry into coinbase binance and 11 other exchanges now this is not an investigation this is a fact finding inquiry and of course depending on what kind of facts they find perhaps an investigation will be opened certainly the regulators in new york have long had a bone to pick with the cryptocurrency exchanges, of course, kicking many of them out previously from New York City. So we'll have to watch how that story develops with certainty. This is a very exciting partnership that's been lined up. The ex-Googlers have formed the ex-Googler Blockchain Alliance. Big names on here, Hitters Zhu of Nebulous, Daniel Wang of Loopring, and Andy Tian of Gifto. That's gonna be pretty big. Definitely something to keep your eyes on moving forward as they bring more people into that partnership. Bitcoin beef over in Taiwan. Taiwanese miner shot by gangsters. Whoa, that's intense, man. Blames China's strict Bitcoin control. Apparently this went down after an argument about mining profits went wrong. Don't mind Bitcoin with gangsters, guys. Never ends up well. Also out of Taiwan today, very interesting news. Bitcoiner runs for mayor of Taipei. Hacker, educator, successful businesswoman, Yi Ting Cheng, better known as Xdite. She is going to be running for the mayor of Taipei. This is very exciting news. She's recently been featured on Humans of Bitcoin. So you can go check that out as well. But there'll be a link to the article, as always, down below. Suspect in Iceland's big Bitcoin heist escapes prison. Now, this is a story we covered a while back where some criminals stole 600 Bitcoin ASICs. Now, the interesting thing for me is that once you escape prison in Iceland, where do you go? I feel like it's one of those places, I know it's a big island, but it's in the North Atlantic and where are you gonna hide? They're gonna find you. Interesting story, nevertheless. This is a nice compilation of 10 expert opinions on where Bitcoin will be by 2019. Now, this ranges from different uh, speculators in the market to venture capital funds. Pantera Capital putting Bitcoin back at $20,000 by December 2018. Fundstrat Global saying $25,000. Max Kaiser, $28,000. Alistair Milne, $35,000 to sixty dollars by the next block reward happening, which is a, a bit longer than the end of the year, of course. Andy Anthony Pompliano, 50,000. John Peffer, 75,000 by December 2018. And finally, Cave Van Peterson, $100,000 by December 2018. Those are some very widely varying numbers, without a doubt. Farther on, they go on to say uh, Tim Draper and Brian Kelly, for example, predicting a quarter million dollars by 2022, which is a bit farther away on the timeline. But you can certainly see that the big money, particularly the venture capital funds, I find their numbers more perhaps valuable because I feel like they tend to underestimate things or 
be a little more accurate with things and try to overhype things. So well, I guess we'll have to see how the end of the year turns out for us. And of course, the big, big story today, Pornhub, actually MindGeek, but Pornhub is underneath them, and a couple other different porn-related websites start accepting Verge as a payment option. Payment option. Got to keep that keep that straight. They're not saying it's the only thing you can use to pay on their websites, but as an option that you can use. Now, I did a poll of this on Twitter earlier, what people think of the Verge partnership, 763 votes in. The majority of people think overhyped or who cares. Only 10% think this is a game-changing situation. 18% think it's awesome. I'm kind of in the middle because, look, adoption's good. It is. The more that cryptocurrency branding gets out there, people see, hey, I can pay in Verge here. That's cool. But who still pays for porn? The internet's like covered with free porn everywhere. It's a very strange thing. I feel like a company like Pornhub probably gets most of their money from advertising, not from paid subscriptions, but I could be wrong on those numbers. But nevertheless, I feel like this is reinforcing an old model with something like porn. Don't know. And of course, Verge will forever now be known as the porn coin. So when you go to your girlfriend and say, hey, I just bought a bunch of Verge, babe. You watching porn again? Am I not beautiful enough? Ay, ay, ay. That is not, of course, I think the reputation that Verge necessarily wants to have, but it will be the reputation that they have now. Now, also something that I think looking on the flip side here is really thinking about what happened in the background of this. Yeah, the adoption's great, and I like that it's getting cryptocurrency out to a larger audience. That's really cool, and I appreciate that. But if I look at actually how this was handled by the Verge team, I'm not impressed at all with the way Verge has done things. Of course, going to the community and doing a fundraiser just to announce their partner. That was not cool. Of course, then token pay coming in after that and funding a big portion of that announcement that came up. How much manipulation went in here? How much money was made by the people pushing the hype in the background? How many people bought the top being promised a game-changing, paradigm-shifting announcement? Everybody thought, oh, it's going to be Amazon. It's going to be PayPal. Of course, why would a company like Amazon or PayPal go with a cryptocurrency like Verge, which of course just suffered a 51% attack recently, which uh, you know definitely doesn't give you a lot of confidence in their uh, overall structure. But of course, not surprised to see them going with a porn company. Great for the porn company, great for Verge, but I'm just not impressed with really what they've done to their community by hyping up you know the, the biggest partnership ever in crypto and all these things and basically making a lot of money off the hype. And then, of course, as you can see, we're down already 27% just in the last few hours. So that's interesting. Those are just my thoughts, though. You guys let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. And, of course, we have a $350 bit main coupon to give away to one lucky winner. Boom! Alessandra Siri. Long live the blockchain. Got a $350 Bitmain coupon coming your way. Today's giveaway, again, big shout out to Brinks Mining, admin and friend of the show. He has given me a whole pile of coupons to give away, so we're going to give those away over the next couple of weeks here. But we got five up to give away tomorrow, $100 each for the coupons, but you got to come over here to Twitter and hit that retweet button and to be in to win. There'll be a link down below. Long live the blockchain, and peace out till next time.